It was a pleasant surprise for me that the System76 Oryx Pro actually did pretty well for this channel. You guys seem to really enjoy it. So here we are again with System76 once again, again. This one is the Darter Pro. So far the box looks pretty much the same. Uh, yep, this is just a shipping box. Unleash your potential. Open box, all right. Lift platform and flatten. Oh. Wait, don't cut it. Packaging is reusable. Uh, a couple of people actually said, oh, that doesn't make any sense. It's, why are you gonna reuse the box? I mean, there's a good reason. Like, if you had to RMA it or something. Uh, so let's see. We've also got the power adapter in here and a little card. Only complaint I have about this box is it's huge. But I mean, it's a shipping box, so what do you expect? Nothing too interesting about the power brick, I don't think. Uh, they do give you a uh, little cleaning cloth and a SSD uh, thermal pad, which is nice. And now we have this card from System76. Oh, a desktop Sentinel, okay. <laughs> Thank you for purchasing a System76 computer. If you, eh, yeah, yeah, okay. I was hoping there would be more to that, but it's just a, hey, it's a warranty thing. This is like a punch out little thing, a little guy that you can stand up. There we go. There, Melvin. Oh, there's more in here. Yeah, all kinds of stickers here. Enough with all that. What is going on here? Oh, okay. Oh, that is quite a fetching unit. No, actually, it looks it looks really nice. I mean, I know this is a Clevo design. Uh, actually, I have exactly what one it is here. Uh, it's actually an NS50MU. They say it's under four pounds, and I believe them. Let's see if they're lying to us. 3.956. 1.795 kg. There will be some variation in the weight depending on how you spec it out because this has two DIMM slots as well as two M.2 slots on the inside for NVMe. Uh, one of which is PCI Express 4.0, which is very nice. On the left side, we have the barrel jack for power, HDMI, a USB 3.2 type A, a USB 3.2 type C, and a Thunderbolt 4 port. On the back, uh, we got nothing, and we've got a vent, actually two. On the right side, we've got a headphone mic combo jack, an SD card, mic micro SD card reader, a USB 2.0 port, the power button, and uh, <laughs> this lovely little collapsible ethernet jack. I love those. Oh, also a Kensington lock port. That's not all there is to the exterior though. If we take a look inside here, under the lid, we can see that we've got a really weird little camera bump. What's that for? Well, it's a 720p webcam, so there's nothing special about that, but it also has Windows Hello sensors. And you can use that with a program called Howdy to actually use Windows Hello in Linux. So you're not missing out on that. There is a, I think it's a 73 watt hour battery. And that is the same battery that's in the uh, Oryx Pro that we looked at before. Ours is kitted out with a Core i7, 1165G7 with Intel Z graphics. Uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM and two by eight configuration. And a one terabyte PCI Express Gen 3 SSD. Now, why Gen 3? Well, it's gonna be a little bit less power hungry for one. And two, most people aren't gonna need Gen 4, but if you do, the slot is there. Trend. Deck flex is pretty much minimal for this kind of design. Like the lid doesn't really flex all that much. It's pretty much what you'd expect from a metal chassis. What else is there to say here? The keyboard layout looks pretty standard for a laptop. Uh, not bad, a full size arrow key cluster here. The inverted T. Uh, keys feel well stabilized actually. Screen is a nice matte finish, but uh, we'll see more about that when we boot it up. First, I need to talk to you about Honey. Honey is the free shopping tool that finds the best promo codes whenever you shop online at specific sites. It works on over 30,000 stores, including Amazon, eBay, Newegg, Razor, Best Buy, Walmart, and many more. Honey gets a small commission from sites whenever they save you money. Get Honey for free right now at joinhoney.com slash short circuit. Anyway, let's plug it in. Having the power button on the side is actually really good because since this is using open source firmware, you can make it so that you can turn the laptop on while it's like the lid is closed, but it, the power is plugged in. All right, we're in Canada. We're not French. 
Why do they keep saying that Canadians are French? It's always defaults to French when we select Canada. All the Quebecers are like, oh, excuse me? If you are a touch typer, you can set the keyboard to whatever layout you want via the firmware because it's open source. So you can make it Dvorak, you can make it Colomac, you could make it uh, Quartz or Azerty. Anyway, it's really cool. <laughs> so here we go, let's encrypt, because why not? Uh, screw it, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Please don't steal my files. By default, they suggest that you do full disk encryption, uh, just for privacy security reasons. Uh, restart device, let's do it. Booting. This will be familiar to anyone who's seen the Oryx Pro video or if anyone who's used Pop! OS, but uh, here's the Pop! OS desktop. It's super clean and uh, it's got this little uh, tiling thing here. What's that? That uh, I don't think was in the Oryx Pro video. You can basically just do everything via the keyboard now. So I can do, I can hold down the Windows key and press the arrows to move around between the different windows. Let's see what all the shortcuts are. Yeah, so I can increase the size like that. It's cool, if not super useful for everybody. And because it's based on Ubuntu, I can install Steam if I go into the pop shop. I want to know just how well Intel's Z graphics works under Linux, because unlike Nvidia, it's not a proprietary driver. It is open source. Basically everything on this machine is open source with the exception of CPU microcode and the Intel management engine, which System76 actually disables by default, or at least as much as they can, uh, because it's a security risk. So you have pretty much total control over the hardware. Processing shaders. Oh God, the progress bar went backwards and it straight up says, no Intel driver issues, not supported. All right, let's put that to the test because we just spent the past 15 minutes installing it. Play. Doom Eternal. I don't know why they don't make this skippable. Oh man. Alt enter. So it looks like it just doesn't like Intel. Okay. Uh, hmm. Let's CSGO. Just need to wait for this cutscene to end because they added this for some reason and you can't skip it. All right, cool. We're in business. Uh-oh, ah, here we go. Oh, can I not? Oh, <laughs> this is horrible. Palm rejection is a thing. Uh, so I can move and I can turn, but if I press a button key on the keyboard and try to turn, I cannot do that. So I need to stop to turn and I got killed by a bot. <laughs> <laughs> How is it looking though? Like, uh, frame, rate? Uh, frame rate is like 70 or 80. There's actually a lot of um, weird graphical glitches going on here. I don't think the driver is perfectly adequate yet, uh, which would explain why it didn't really work very well in Doom Eternal. All right, so gaming isn't this thing's forte, at least not right now until the driver is, you know, improved. But that's not too bad because this machine isn't really meant for gaming anyway. It's more of a portable workstation. How much is this spec going for right now? Uh, the current spec I think is 1550 roughly. Um, I'll have the full price on the screen here, but um, it's uh, 1099 for the base unit. So that's, I think, with a Core i5 and eight gigs of RAM and a 250 gig SSD. So with that in mind, let's test out the speakers. I think the speakers are coming up. Yeah, the speakers are on the bottom. Can we use this video also as a screen quality check? Uh, I mean, the screen looks fine. Nothing fancy as far as like HDR or high refresh rate goes, but uh, it looks pretty spot on to me. Let me load up a Linus Tech Tip video and see what that looks like. You know, it, it looks like a perfectly fine display. It is IPS, so it's not going to let you down in that regard. You're not gonna have difficulty seeing it off axis. Brightness of the screen though, this is as high as it goes. Let's, let's do like half brightness iPhone right next to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing about this is that it's actually straight up a Clevo design. So if you've seen one of these, you've seen them all physically. So there's not really a whole lot else to say about it. The secret sauce, as it were, is all in the operating system and in the firmware. 
for the money, it's not a bad machine. It's just not amazing. It's not gonna outdo a MacBook Air M1, um, which is in around this price point. So it really depends on what you value as a consumer. Like, do you, would you prefer a Windows laptop? I mean, maybe. Would you prefer Mac OS? Also, maybe. But if you prefer Linux, if you want to get into something that you can tinker with because you can change so many things like the battery charge rate, the battery, um, I think the maximum charge you can probably tweak as well. Uh, you can change the TDP of your CPU to turn it down or turn it up. <laughs> the keyboard, basically anything you can think of, which is really cool. So there is a little bit of overhead for that. And I think it should be kind of considered when you look at the price for this kind of thing. Like the thing is, this is here today. It works. It is very well integrated. As far as integration goes, um, System76 is probably more deeply integrated with the hardware and the software than any Windows PC manufacturer, just as a result of the, the core boot, the uh, custom firmware for the memory controller, but they don't take that away from you. They give it to you. And that counts for a lot. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a nice portable workstation that you can upgrade, that you can service, and that isn't actually, uh, like, it doesn't really have any major downfalls aside from the fact that the speakers suck, it's, it's good. They do have their own in-house laptops coming though. There will probably be a couple more generations of these before they actually manage to get a laptop out. But when they do, I'm looking very much forward to seeing what they can come up with. Thanks for watching. Get subscribed so you don't miss the next time we take a look at a uh, obscure piece of hardware from a semi-obscure company.